uninterrupted beach is Huntington Beach, California, host once again to the Purina Pro Plan Incredible Dog Challenge. For the last six years, the IDC Western Regional Championships has made its mark in Surf City, USA, becoming one of the premier stops of the IDC. Each of these canine athletes will compete for a spot at the National Championship Finals at Purina Farms. Who will win gold in the Golden State? Find out next. It's the Purina Pro Plan Incredible Dog Challenge, and it starts right now. And a beautiful sunny day here in Huntington Beach, California. Large crowd in attendance, perfect weathering conditions for the Western Regional Championships. Trace Worthington here alongside Shalini Cockrell. Welcome in to the Purina Arena as we take a closer look at the small dog agility course, Shalini. Looking at the course layout, it is three fast obstacles right into a challenge area and a back jump loop or a serpentine through that set of jumps. Later on, that same type of serpentine is another challenge for the dogs. This is fast. Each and every obstacle is numbered and set in a specific order so the handlers have to work with their dogs to get through correctly and get across that finish line as fast and clean as possible. And each competitor gets two runs. And it's the best of two that counts. Skyler is the dog. Sandy Scott is the handler. The 11-year-old female Shetland Sheepdog underway here with Small Dog Agility. Of course, all of our small dogs have the bar height uh, set at 12 inches, which correlates to the height of the dog at the height of the withers, which is the top of their shoulder blades. That's how they differentiate the size categories in agility. Sandy, an agility trainer, and she hosts many agility events herself, and now on one of the biggest stages competing in Western Regional Championships. You can see Sandy running right up alongside Skylar. She's also using a lot of hand commands. Verbal commands are also used out on the course to direct the dog to the right obstacle. They made a mistake there, had to go back and correct. So they're going to have fault seconds added on to the length of their run, plus the time to go back and do it correctly. So in this case, five seconds added on, 53 tenths. So they're going to be looking to run two in order to upgrade that time. It's all about communication and the bond out there with your dog and getting through the course. It's the best of two for each of the competitors. So Lottie Cummings... And Jax, the seven-year-old male Pembroke Welch Corgi. Little dog from Emerald Hills, California, already a fault out of the gates. Sometimes it's hard for the dogs when they see a straight line of obstacles coming out of that start line. There's three that they can see in their line of sight. And so they just want to get to the next one. Easy to knock that first bar. <laughs> but any and all dog breeds can compete here. Winning the audience over for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Our little short-legged small dog. Look at that. that oh! Wipe out through the weed poles, having fun. And she's going to choose, it looks like, to not go back and correct on um, that weed pole. Hey, the shortest route. That's right. Let's just get to the end and have fun, and we'll just fix it next time. <laughs> All right, well, they'll have a second run. But in this one, again... A huge appreciation from the audience. And here we go with Liza Buckner and her dog Hefe, an eight-year-old male mix. Now what's interesting here is that Liza says that Hefe always knows that if there's a crowd on hand, that this is an important run. So she must be able to tell by how he acts or responds to her that he knows it's time to perform. She rescued Hefe from Half Moon Bay Rescue. Now, at the Incredible Dog Challenge, in front of a large crowd, the Weed Pulse nailed it. Doing it all for in small dog style and being quick between those obstacles, which matters, and shaving off those fractions of seconds and time. You don't see too many clean runs, but you have one there. No faults. 37.85, so now in the lead. What a great run, hitting all of the contacts. Those yellow zones have to be touched coming off of the dog walk, the A-frame, and the teeter-totter for safety reasons. Timing the jumps perfectly to clear them without any problem and working together as a team. Carol Newman, the retired fourth grade teacher in her dog Flash, the eight-year-old male 
Old Shetland Sheepdog from Pleasanton, California. Here we go. So there are several different ways to communicate out there on the field. Here's some verbal commands there. Some confusion, and that came from where Carol was positioned on the course. And she actually says that body positioning is the main way that she directs Flash out here from one obstacle to the other. Solid over the dog walk, coming into the weave poles. Clean so far, got it. Since Flash is a herding dog, Rice also says she watches her feet. Again, all communication right there, where she's at on the course, and where Flash is looking to go. Going back and correcting to get around that 360 jump. It's difficult to change the direction on those jumps and not hit them straight on as well. The dogs are coming at it, and it's called a slice jump. 30 seconds added on, so 76.27, and they'll focus on their second run. It's the best of two, again. Here is Diana Yaris and her dog, Rush, final competitors in this first round of Small Dog Agility. <laughs> Quick little dog, good ground speed. Now as you can see, Rush working kind of away from Diana, and she says verbal commands are important for them because when he's out ahead of her, she has to be able to yell his direction, she can hear her.
Otherwise, they did a great job in execution. Lonnie Cummings and Jax. Remember, they went through and just to kind of bailed halfway through, went straight to the finish. <laughs> so we'll see if Jax can get it together this time around. Always takes that first run, Shalene. You gotta get used to the crowd, you know, the pressure and all that stuff. So maybe they'll clean things up here in the second run. Well, remember on the first run, it all kind of fell apart at the weave pole. So that's coming up here in just a moment. I think if they can execute and get into the weaves properly and complete that obstacle, that they'll probably be fine. Here's that section. And there you go. Nice job. All right. Now it's just trying to stay on course to actually complete the run. I'm sure that uh, Lonnie's really feeling Look excited. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, a much different run. Yeah, amazing. Good job. For the Pembroke Welch Corgi, and they come in with a 44.09, a clean run. What an improvement. They move into third. That's what's fun to see is when something can go so off the rails in the first round, and then you can see all the corrections being made, and to have a jump like that from last to third, impressive. Great refocus as we look at Hefe, the eight-year-old male mix, and Handler, Liza Buckner, and they had a 37.85 after the first round. They still sit in second right now at that time. So really just going to push it here for the speed on this run. See if they can advance. Of course, everybody wants to be on top of the podium. They take home the Western Regional Championships and get that new in St. Louis.
are set for medium dog agility. Round one is already in the books. It's the best of two that'll count. Christine Brew and Boo, the one in our incredible weed bowl competition, are in the lead coming into the second run. But first, it's Dabadoo and KC Cooper in a first run time of 46.72. Dabadoo, a miniature American Shepherd out here on the course. All of the bar heights have been moved to 16 inches for our medium agility competitors. They have to have the ground speed, they have to have the execution. We have a judge on the field just making sure that things are done properly. And to remind you, if they're not, then fault seconds are added on to the total length of the run. a good run the score to beat 41.33 can they do it and it's 40.27 yes top of the podium for now in the second run slow and steady winning the race or at least moving them up for now getting through clean good communication and support throughout the course nice job Lori Asbury and Spree, the seven-year-old female Australian cattle dog, at a 57.99 in run one. Lots of room for improvement from Littleton, Colorado. Here we go. Very fast little dogs. So they're going to look at correcting on those mistakes. Lori says that Spree is very athletic and body aware and a little fearless out there on the course. <laughs> oh, one bar down. But man, they're moving fast. And she says she's so fast that Lori says she can't even keep up, so she uses verbal commands mainly out on the field as opposed to body positioning or hand cues. It's always pretty interesting to see and watch the handlers try and keep up with their dog, Shalene, coming through. They'll have a few seconds added on because of the fault. Five seconds in exact 36.52, but that'll move them into the lead. Free almost looking like... You know, she just does where she's going on her own out there, but it was still up to uh, Lori to direct her with those verbal commands across all those obstacles. Nice run. Christine Brew and Boo already have a title here this weekend in Weaves, and Boo, the two-and-a-half-year-old Pumi, is looking to carry on the family tradition and add to a long lineage of champions. So I've been doing agility probably about 17 years. I actually started with a Bedlington Terrier. I got into it because I had some friends and I have a twin sister who actually also does agility um, and I have this active dog. So I thought this would be a great sport to start and once you get into it, it's actually hard to stop doing it. Um, so with that, I got my first Pumi and then Indy and now Boo. So his grandmother was Bella and she won the small dog agility. His grandmother, Aria, won Weave and then his mother, Indy, was here last year and she won the Weave and got second in agility. Uh, Indy making absolutely no mistakes. Putting the pressure on the rest of the field. And now this is the fourth generation, the son of Indy. So he's the first boy to count in the line. He's just a really, he's young, so he's a little bit faster, I think, because when Indy came last year, she was six. So having a younger dog that's a little bit less seasoned is a different challenge. He's got a lot of speed, so it's trying to kind of get the accuracy and just, you know, be in tune with him in a new place that he's never run before. I think because I raised him, our bond is very strong. He loves working. He's got a really good work ethic, so no matter what we do, um, he's just very in tune with me, just like his mother. So we do hiking. Um, recently, we started doing the sport of nose work, um, but mostly just a lot of play together, because to do agility successfully, they have to want to work with you and play with you. And agility is essentially play with a few more rules. So we feed Karina's pro plan, and I think it just helps sustain him, gives him a lot of energy, he loves it, um, and it drives him to run as fast as we saw earlier, so it's really, it's really great for him. Who is Pumi, a fairly rare herding breed that originates from the country of Hungary. Now, they were leading after the first run, but then came along Dabadu and Spree, pushing them into third. Pressure's off. Well, Christine talked about how much Blue likes to work, and as a herding breed, he has intense drive and a great work ethic out there on the course, and they've got good communication. That bond matters. <laughs> and that fast, quick move, yeah. and ground speed matters. Look at this. Look at this run going on by Moo. Unbelievable. Okay. Under 30 seconds, that is truly incredible. It's 
things like this, barely clearing the tip of the A-frame there, hitting those running contacts so nothing slows down. Look at the smiles. What a joyful win. <laughs> they won in incredible weave pulls, and they're hoping that it holds on and winning another event in medium dog agility. But it all comes down to Prize and Kate Perot. Their first run time, Shaleen, 42.83. Our defending Western Regional Champ in medium agility right here, so they have the experience if they can clean it up. Just showing that fast ground speed, everything executed correctly. Here we are to the finish. This is going to be a close one. Wow, another fast run. Impressive. 29.87. That is a massively fast run. And a second place, only good for second. Sub 30 second times on the agility course. That's amazing. But this one falling just short of the podium. But look how quick these obstacles are executed. But boo. Threaten stuff, showing us how it's done. So Boo is two for two at these championships. Winning in weaves and agility. Sean is with them. Smitty. Such a fast dog. Congratulations on the win. How do you keep up with that dog so quick? We just run really, really fast. <laughs> now, Boo's mother and grandmother were champions. This is keeping it in the family. Awesome, yes. We're very, very excited about that. They, these guys run super fast. I mean, it's a rare breed. And so we discovered their speed and keep breeding them and keep breeding for that speed. And the key is just to keep them really, really happy the whole time they're out there.